Hello my art loving friends! I have a very exciting video for you today because today we are going to be playing with this Zen Art 100% cotton watercolor paper and the Zen Art Nomad watercolor palette. It looks like a pretty unique palette so I'm excited to get into it. Okay, the watercolor paper did come wrapped in the cellophane here. So this is 20 sheets of paper, 140 pound cold pressed Let's see, oh, interesting. So it is a block, but this is like that other block. Oh, what brands were those? Like the Fabriano, I think, or something. They're only glued on two, two edges. So the top and bottom are not glued down and that's fine. It's fine, it's whatever. So the texture is pretty nice. It's not like that uber machine mill texture. It's more a cross between that and the rougher texture you get with Arches paper. All right, let's open this palette and see what it's all about. I'm kind of excited for that. I did watch Lindsay the Frugal Crafter's review on the Zen Art paints. She didn't have this palette, she had some of the other ones and she did not recommend it necessarily. <laughs> so I'm curious to see how this one will be. So just a piece of plastic to protect that nice clean bottom there. Thumb rack hole thingy or you can, that or you can lift that up oh i forgot this one came with brushes oh and a some kind of pencil oh yeah it was a regular pencil it had that edge showing and i thought oh it's a different color but no it's just got sharpened crooked what do these brushes feel like they're soft so you could probably get away with using them for watercolor this one's not too bad at all uh, i was going to say that one's a little short for watercolor but there is a nice round one here it barely has any sizing in it. And the short handles are kind of intriguing. It's not like baby short where you can't use it at all, but it is short. I'm not gonna put this back on right now because without water around, that will just make a mess. So this lifts up. Wow, that's pretty neat. Oh, so they have a little swatch sheet in here for you and it feels like it's on watercolor paper, nothing too fancy of paper, however. So apparently those are the color names and a little protecting sheet that is also covered in like little plastic to protect it even more. <laughs> oh, a built-in sponge. I thought that was laying on top of some colors, but it's not, it's built in. So I should probably read this. 24 half pans, seven tools, one, two, three, four. So we actually have 26 half pans and it might, I better make sure I'm doing my math right, you guys, right in the history of my channel. <laughs> I've gotten that wrong, but four times six is 24 and then two extras. So this doesn't tell me what the extras are about. So that's interesting. Okay, I wonder if there's any info on these themselves because they don't come in a pan. They're just loose in this set itself but these colors well this orange is definitely not anywhere else in here and i assume that one is not as well so how do i get these out without dumping it you just have to get something that'll fit in there like so i just want to pull one more out just to see so that's a pretty large amount of paint let's grab a regular half pan and compare real quick this is my art well set i still have over here because i haven't laminated the sheet the swatch sheet yet. Okay, so yeah, it's a, a little bigger than the bottom part of a half pan and definitely too big to squish into a half pan. It is flatter than a half pan, so it's probably the equivalent of a very full half pan of paint, so that's good to know. And they're all individually wrapped. I think I told you that, or you probably can see that with your own eyes. So we'll have to unwrap them all and give them a try. Kind of breaking in the middle to just show you that I thought these were going to be really hard to unwrap, but they're not. So they have a, it's not a corrugation, but do you know what I mean? Where they kind of put little dots in to make plastic come off of things easier. Plus on each end, it's slightly open. They're actually the sides, not the end. So you can just grab in that slight opening and pull across the part that has the dots and it's unwrapped. So this is not actually taking forever like I feared. This still would be hard to get open if you didn't have the, the slight opening on the side to grab into because then you'd have to tear through the plastic somehow. But luckily all of these have at least a little bit of an opening that you can grab that. So not too bad. Thank goodness I was worried about that for a second. 
Once they were all unwrapped, I filled out the swatch sheet that they sent with it. I thought, why not? They already have it divided and perfectly aligned to the palette. It fits in the palette, even if I laminate it. I think it's going to fit in the palette, so it's not the best paper, but it worked. And here are all the swatches. They're really pretty. The colors are vibrant. Everything re-wet really easily, and I liked that. And I did my usual salt method over on the side, and it's so fun to see how they react with salt. So I'm really glad I started that on all of my swatch sheets. So 24 colors on its own is a lot of colors. So having the two extra colors is quite the bonus. I've already mentioned that it's quite the bonus. But anyway, I did go re-watch Lindsay the Frugal Crafters video, and her set also came with those two extra colors. So I suspect that's a pretty standard thing. Has anyone else ordered this set? And did you get those two extra colors? Anyway, I just flipped this swatch sheet over and put those on the back and then kind of guessed at what they were. All done with the swatches and they are very cool. When I put this one on, it was really interesting because I added the salt and it pushed the pigment immediately away from that, which was very interesting. And then the two extra colors I think are a Quinn Gold, if I would guess at the color. <laughs> And that's either a burnt umber or a Van Dyke brown. Anyway, it's a brown that I really, really like to have in my paint sets. So I am grateful to have that because otherwise I only have burnt sienna and the raw umber for like a brown color. And that medium brown here that goes right in between those two is perfect. Also, the pamphlet that comes with the paint set has all of the pigment information. So it has the pigment numbers, codes, whatever you want to call it, plus the transparency rating and the light fast rating. And in this case, the light fast ratings for the stars are three is excellent, two is very good, and one is good. And so if you would like to pause and check those out, there they are. And what I will probably do is just cut these out of here and paste them on the back of this. I think there's enough room. I'll have to cover these over, but I was thinking of doing a little add-on right here to show they are over here. So we'll see how that goes, I don't know. No need to reproduce this information if cutting it out and pasting it on will work. Um, it's probably the same amount of time and effort really, but it'd be kind of fun to just have them right from here. All right, it is time to do a painting with this. However, I do feel that the brushes that came with this set here are just a little bit small to do a painting on a 12 by 12. However, if you're traveling with this set, I think these size of brushes would probably be perfect for an A6 to an A5 size sketchbook. But a 12 by 12, I think I'm going to get out my regular brushes and use those for that. So I started right in on my painting and those of you that are my Patreon supporters will probably recognize this scene if you have received July's postcard. <laughs> and I think most of you have by now. And you probably saw that I started by wetting the entire page with a big hockey brush. And that was a good test right from the start on how the paper took water. And there was nothing significantly different with it than my arches. I had to put a lot of water on it, just like I do with my arches paper, because cotton paper just is grabby, if you know what I mean. It just grabs the water, it grabs the brush, grabs the water out of the brush. So you need a lot of water with it. And so yeah, it just seemed pretty normal. And you can see the color payout that I'm getting with these is pretty mm -hmm. significantly good. And if you hear all that noise in the background, I am puppy sitting my, <coughs> hey, puppy sitting my husband's dog while he's at a race again. <coughs> Stop, Jack. Anyway, he's barking at my golden retriever. So, ah, I have tried recording this for hours and he just won't stop. We've brought him on walks, we've played ball, we've dunked him in the pool, we've tried to keep him busy, and he's just oh, making this video last a lot longer than it really needs to for the editing process. Ah! But the painting turned out beautifully as far as the colors go, so I'll talk to you more about that here in real life in just a second. Here is the painting all dry. So, due to the power of YouTube editing, you'll be able to see that drying shift better than I am. However, when I come back and look at this later, it's probably been 45 minutes. I like the way it dried, so maybe that drying shift wasn't too bad. However, because I'm a human being, <laughs> I do have a bit of a raise here with my horizon line. Sorry, right here. I was looking in the camera and not my finger. Anyway, a uh, kind of a lift here. So technically, a horizon line or 
a lake to shoreline would be straight. Mine is not straight, but that's okay. I really like to use my ruler to get these off the block. So I just pull that under the glued edge and it works usually really, really well for getting this off the block. So regardless of the drawing shift, which I will look at in editing because I don't know how it was, I think the painting is quite pretty, except for my rays in my line there. Well, we're not gonna talk about that. So I want to do one more painting with this because I just don't feel like I'm, and I'm, I'm not done. <laughs> I'm not done. I need to do more. So my son took this picture, which I'll put up on the screen for you. This is like if you step out of the back door of our house and it's like a foggy morning or evening, probably a morning, this is what you'll see. And so I figured I'll paint that, but I'm gonna stylize it a little bit. And when I said stylize a little bit, well, it may have turned into stylize a lot. <laughs> I don't know. I was just feeling off, like loose and I don't know. You'll just see. It's a very loose interpretation of that beautiful picture that my son took. However, I do love it. When I look back at it now, it has some beautiful blooms and very interesting colors. So I may get that painting back out and I don't know, do something over the top of it. I think it could be fun. So you can see the colors going on. They're, they're nice. I, I don't know. I'm pretty impressed with this paint set, you guys. I have to admit it. So far, so good. Yeah, see how loose and uh, stylized this painting got? <laughs> it's kind of fun though. And now, because I just could not find anything bad to say about these paints, I just wanted to keep painting with them and painting with them and trying different things. So I pulled out a hefty sheet of Arches 300 pound, so 600 GSM cotton watercolor paper. And I'm trying that on this. I thought, hey, this'll, this'll show chalkiness. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that, but I'm like, at least put me on a paper that I know is really awesome and try it out. So here we are using these again and I'm getting bit by the puppy because I'm trying to keep him from barking, but that's okay. But look at that, look at the color. Oh, it's so pretty, you guys. I don't know, I can't believe because these paints look so chalky when you look at them in the pan and I'll talk a bit about that later, but they just look so pretty on the paper. And is it just me? Like, I don't know, am I imagining that? It's kind of interesting. I enjoyed painting on this paper. I can tell you that though. And oh my goodness, how I would love to have a huge stash of this really thick watercolor paper, but I don't, but it would be nice. Well, all in all, this was a pretty fascinating process. I kept doing more paintings, trying to figure out if these would become chalky on the paper and they don't. They definitely look chalky in here though. I have a puppy in the background in case you hear noise over there. So they look chalky in here, just like the koi ones do, but they paint out beautifully. So they're so vibrant though, I suspect there's probably dyes in them, even though it doesn't say there is, and there's pigment information and life ass information, but what I plan on doing is of course, getting swatches of these in the window and we can start the light fast testing. Hopefully in the next week or so, I have several sets over there that I need to add to that. And that'll be the real test, I guess. But for now, sketchbooks, go for it. This is a fun set. Not to mention the palette itself is so cool that if you wanted to just buy it for the $29, that's what it shows today because it's like 39, but there's a $10 coupon. They're all individually wrapped. You could take them out, pour in your own paint and just have this really nice palette. This thing is plastic, but it's sturdy. The paint doesn't beat up very much at all, like not at all and then barely. So I would say that you've got a winner there and these little brush holding part is really neat. If you had nicer brushes that you wanted to use, then you just cut them. <laughs> if you didn't mind cutting the ends off your brushes, just so they fit, uh, you'd have to make sure the width of the handles of course fit, but the round ones of these seem to be good. The flat one just doesn't hold very much water. That's the only problem I had with that. I probably told you that already, but I was really excited because the paper was still 50% off like last week, but now it's not. Now it's like 20% off. So check out the links below if you wanna go get it. Also, both of these, the paper and this paint set are way cheaper 
in the Amazon UK. So amazon.co.uk. All right, I'll stop talking your ear off and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. Okay, the watercolor paper. Wow, that did not come out very well. <laughs> Not to mention the dog is being quite loud. There's my little pencil. Uh, he's teething. Anyway. Hey, you two cuties. What are you up to? Jack Jack. Hi, baby. Bruno. Yo, little brown dog. <laughs> And they're kind of tired. I woke them up from a nap, brought them out here.